Good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day 2017 to all of you people who are listening. God bless you. I'm saying Happy Father's Day to everyone who is a father and our Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and may God continue to be your Jehovah Jireh, your provider, and give you all that you need. Have patience and wait on him. There's a song that a lady used to sing in a church I used to go to years ago called Hold On to God's Unchanging Hand. So that's what I'm going to say to you fathers today and mothers, uh, specifically fathers, since it's Father's Day, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Things might not go the way you you want them to go, but I want you to know God is there. Whether Whether or not you can see him or feel him, God is with you. Just as God was with Adam, God is with you. And if you ever need help raising your family, financially, with a job, anything in your life with your health, God is there for you. Always inquire with God, okay? Amen. This is Reverend Nancy coming at you on the 18th of June, uh, 2017, Father's Day. And um, I'd like to give you what you call, what I call a little bit of word. We call it micromana. We've been doing this for years, and God's been blessing us more and more in different ways um, from people all around the world, different nations. We have Bible studies going out all around the world to villages and, and countries and nations. And God has been good to little old New Birth Ministries, amen, <laughs> amen, with micro manna. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a little word. I don't like, I'm trying to shorten this up a little bit get, so I don't take up too many people's time. I just like to get the word out, okay? Less me, more God, amen, amen, less me, more God. So just a little micro manna, um, 1 Thessalonians, if you want to turn to the back of your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'll be reading... Verse 11. Let me see. I think I'll go, I'll go. I'll be reading verse 11 to chapter 5, verse 9. Okay? Um, I'll be reading chapter 4, verses 11 to end, 11 to 18. And then I'll read chapter 5, verse 9. Father God, I thank you for this word today. I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for this new Father's Day and 2017. Bless all the fathers and help them, Lord God, open up their eyes, their spiritual eyes, their spiritual ears to be able to hear you speak to them. And, Lord God, as I speak this word, hallelujah in Jesus' holy name, cause someone to hear you in their hearts. Cause someone to to give their lives to you, cause someone that did not know this information to know it now and teach it to others. I thank you for using me, Father. I thank you for ordaining me for such a time as this. My name, Esther. I even thank you for my name. I bless my name in Yeshua HaMashiach's name, Jesus the Christ, and I bless all the others on this call in Jesus' name. Amen. And it says, and that ye study to be quiet and do your own business and work with your own hands as we command you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, hallelujah, amen, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And I'm going to read chapter 5, verse 9. It says, very, very important, okay? I don't know how many people have seen this and paid attention to it, but I'm I'm bringing it up to you today because the Lord wants you to know this. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 says, For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Now, I will start with verse 11. It says, study, be quiet, and do your own work. Do your own business. Stay in your own lane. Okay? Amen. Stay in your own lane. That's what I preached on last week. Stay in your own lane. Amen. All right? Now, what we're talking about here in verse 11, he said, study. Study to be quiet. Do your own business and work with your own hands as we commanded you. All right? They we're talking about industry here. Literally, work. Okay? God's word is speaking on work. God wants you to work. He wants you to take... God made the human body to take care of itself. Amen? And your spirit and your soul inside of that human body, you should be a helper and not a hindrance. Industry is incorporated here. Okay, um, and uh, forgive me for saying it this way as an example, though, because there are some people who did it throughout the years. It, it doesn't mean having babies, baby after baby after baby, specifically for cash and food stamps, all right? God did not intend for us to live that way. Now, there are people who need help, but there are also people who abuse the system as well, okay? And this is not talking about parents chastising a child to the point um, when he's bad, okay? You ever see a person chastising a child when they're bad, okay? And then um, at least they, they call the child bad, okay? And most likely, most of the time, the child just needs attention and needs correction, as the Bible says. The Bible corrects us. The Word of God corrects us. So they take him to the doctor, and what happens? The doctor gives this badness, quote, unquote, a label, and they get paid for it. When m- most of the time, all that was required was deliverance. I remember one time I took my daughter to uh, the Walmart, okay, local Walmart, and my daughter just wanted to cash a check, and she's standing in line. There's a lady in front of her, okay, and the lady has a lot of children. She had a lot of checks on her. The lady had about eight checks, okay. You you do the math. This lady had about eight checks, and in the state of Pennsylvania, you get about approximately six to seven hundred dollars a month, okay. This lady, my daughter, I was wondering what took her so long, and I texted her on the phone. I said, what's taking so long? She goes, Mom, there's somebody in front of me with a lot of checks. I said, okay. My daughter came out. She said, Mom, this lady had, had I think, nine, because there was eight kids and her. This lady cast nine checks in Walmart, nine disability checks in Walmart from her family. That's a lot of money. Um, and, I, you know, this, sooner or later there's an abuse. When does it stop? Not saying, okay, that all of the, the, the entire family needed that. But, you know, like I said, the doctor will give it a label, and next thing you know, you're getting, people are getting paid for it, okay? You know, you have um, black chairs disease. So the next thing you know, you're getting $700 uh, free dollars a month because you have what's called black, because you like to sit on black chairs, okay? <laughs> and sooner or later, it's gonna, when does it stop, you know? And um, sometimes there can also be a miswiring in the brain. We understand that. But that's not in every case, okay? Verse 12, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Okay, verse 12, help those who are without so the world can have a healthy balance. Okay, verse 12 is telling us um, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that you also may not have lack of anything. Okay, well, this is telling you share. Just simply, is your cup running over? Share with someone else. And this is what it's telling us. Share, like for instance, as an example, entertainers. There are certain entertainers that get stinking rich, and I mean stinking rich, to the point where their spirit stinks. Okay, their soul is stinking and they don't know what to do. Put it this way, they know what to do, but they don't want to because it, let's admit, okay, even when we were out there in the world, <clears throat> sin is intriguing. That's why people sin because it's attractive. Okay, and what happens is some of these entertainers, they get stinking rich to the point where of illicit sex and HIV. 
and I won't go into any names, but there because there are so many of them. So many people they have so they get so much. You ever seen a person get so much money that they just start living crazy? And this is what we're talking about here. Okay, he says help other people. Amen. Walk honestly, not sinfully, not worldly, toward them that are without. And it also says, get this, when you give, you won't lack either. The more you give, the more you get. Okay, this is what it's telling us. And not, 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 you know, some people get so much money, you know, they're going to bed with whomever is ready. You know, you see this happening in the entertainment world as well, not just the entertainment world, but the world period. Okay, they're, having, they're having sex with whoever is ready, whoever's around and inebriated as well. We're going back to Sodom and Gomorrah. You can plainly see that. There's no guessing game there. Verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Verse 13. Don't overgrieve for a deceased one. Know that God's got this. It's okay to grieve, but not to the point of lifelong depression and making everybody else around you miserable. Okay, he says, I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That means the people who are passed on, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. What they're telling you, don't act like, you know, when someone passes away, of course you're going to grieve. It's natural for you to grieve. But he's saying, don't act like you have no hope, like all is lost. And don't act like God can't remedy situations for you. Don't act like God stopped being your provider, you know, um, it's okay to grieve, but not to the point of lifelong depression and making everybody else around you miserable. Okay, almost to the point where you are lonely now because you you've, you've grieved too long. I'll give you my personal example, okay, the way I was raised. Um, I was the youngest of 10 kids, and when I was three months old, my father shot my mother, and then he shot himself, and I, was ado- I became an orphan. I was adopted in a few different homes. Rough life, okay. But I went around for years telling people, I'm the youngest of 10 kids. When I was three months old, my dad shot my mom and then himself, and I was an orphan. Okay? Don't, when you, when something like this happens to you, it's miserable. Everybody doesn't want to keep hearing that over and over and over. Don't repeat it with every new person who tries to friend you. Okay, I was repeating this to every new person that wanted to be my friend, everybody that, that I met in my life. Okay, and what was happening was I didn't realize it was a turnoff because what happens is when you do this stuff, you're literally beginning, you, you're manip- it's, it's witchcraft. It's a, it's a form of manipulation. You are manipulating people's um, emotions, their feelings. You're looking for attention. You're taking the attention off of the God in you. Get it? Okay, the Holy Spirit lives in you, and what you're doing is you're taking the attention off of the God in you and how you can bless that pe- those people in your life and how you could both be a blessing to one another, and you're focusing the attention on just you, not God in you, but you, okay? And the Bible says, well, a man robbed God, and that's not just talking about money, okay? It's a turnoff. People get turned off. And sooner or later, you'll find out that only drunks and drug addicts will have time to listen to that sadness. And then you're wondering why you're attracting so much negativity. 20 years old, 30, 40, 50 years old, telling the same old story. I'm going to tell you now, personally, it doesn't work. Amen. Stop grieving so long. Okay? Amen. Um, Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will bring, uh, will God bring with him. Okay, it's telling you here in verse 14, concentrate on Jesus' return. This is what we should be looking for. This is our hope. This is the only hope we have in this world. There's nothing that can replace it. Okay, man keeps trying to replace Jesus' return with other junk, but the junk don't work. (laughs) <laughs> the junk doesn't work, okay? Concentrate on Jesus' return. This is your hope, okay? Like when I was telling you about my story and everything, you know, um, I'm so busy telling the, the I was adopted and my dad killed my mom and blue, blue, blah, blee, blee, blue. And next thing you know, I'm looking up like, oh, was that Jesus? <laughs> you know, you missed the whole thing. You missed him coming back complaining. You don't want to miss Jesus coming back, right? 
Don't complain so much that you look up and you see a, a flash in the sky and you go, uh-oh, oops. It's too late now. You were so, so, so busy att- attracting attention to your negativity it was, you wasn't focusing on the positivity. You wasn't thinking on, on, on the hope, the good thing that Jesus gave you in life is him coming back, okay? Uh, the dead in Jesus will return with him. I love that. Verse 14 says, it says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which, uh, which sleep, also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. Guess who's coming back? Guess who's coming back? Just take a guess. When Jesus comes back, your loved ones who are, if you notice what it says, in Jesus, the ones who believe, the, the ones who believed in the Lord, believed in God's Son, are coming back with God's Son. Guess who you're going to see? They're coming back. Your loved ones are coming back. Number 15 also tell you, now, number 15 reminds us of something. It says, for uh, this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, okay, it's us, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. That means we will not proceed. We, we will not precede those which are asleep, which means that your loved ones are coming back with Jesus before you'll, they'll get to see him before you do. Okay, we won't precede those that have already passed. They're coming with Jesus to get us. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend with, uh, from heaven with a shout, I love that, uh, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And in, in other words, you're going to hear him. It's going to be something. It's going to be loud. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. It tells you right there in verse 16, after the shout of return, which everybody's going to hear, after the shout of return, the dead in Christ shall rise first. For they, look, they have what? What do they call it in the work world? When you've been there longer, seniority, okay? They have, the dead in Christ have seniority. That means your mom, your baby, your dad, they shall see him first, your grandma, your aunt, all of your loved ones, okay? They're coming to get you. Don't take my word for it. Read the Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Read it. They're coming to get the, your loved ones that, that believed in Jesus Christ. They're coming to get you with him. Verse 17, then we which are alive and remain, notice it says then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 17 is extremely important. I love it. It says only in 17 and 18. It says only then will we be caught up with it. After your loved ones in Christ come back with Jesus, we are going to be caught up with them. Okay, imagine this in, in your mind. With them and all, okay, all of them and Jesus in the clouds. They are going to, we are, they're, they're going to pull Jesus his power and his love is going to pull us up to be with them. All of us will be together. And guess what? It's going to be an eclipse to the sinners down here on this earth. <clears throat> that will be the first time <clears throat> that we are going to darken the sinner's doorstep, so to speak, <laughs> okay, with our presence. They're going to be looking up. They're going to be like, well, we can't see it. It moved. Can you move? It's dark. What's going on? They ain't know, they know what's going on. Jesus came and you didn't accept him and you just got left. Okay, amen. That's exactly, it's going to be dark. The sky is going to be dark with all of those saints rising. Can you see it? Can you see it? And I'm not talking about the gray clouds that cover over your city and make your city look a little dark for about 45 minutes to an hour, and then they move and then the sun comes back out again. No, it's going to be dark, okay? And we are going to be smiling. It's, it's going to be a feeling that you just cannot imagine. Amen. Verse 18 says, um, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort other people with the scripture. Look, 
start preaching this, start teaching this, start telling people about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and chapter 5. People need to hear this. They don't know this. I bet people don't know. I wonder how many people don't know that their loved ones are going to come back. The loved ones in Christ are going to come back with Jesus up in the sky. And they're going to look, at, look down and see if they're going to be waiting on us. And we're going to meet them. How many people don't know that? Amen? How many people don't know that? Folks need to hear this, everybody. Go out and tell people the word. And then I will end it like this. Uh, first says 5, verse 9. Watch this. This is very, very important. A lot of people don't know this either. You, you, have, the, you have what, what pre-trib, um, mid-trib, post-trib, high-trib, low-trib, I don't know trib. And let me tell you something about the tribulation, okay? Chapter 5, verse 9, it says, For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, come on. We, may, we, we make things too complicated. Salvation means what? Save. Okay? Wrath means what? A stirring up. Okay, uh, um, 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 uh, how do you say, I, wanna, I don't want to say mean, but uh, just put uh, something that you do not want to experience, okay? God, okay, God being upset with the world, okay? This is what this telling us, okay? It plainly states that God's wrath on this world is N-O-T, not for the saints, not for the saints. Now, we understand that there's people right now getting beheaded and everything for, for Christianity. Lord bless those people. That's going to happen, especially depends on, uh, it just depends on where the devil is, to be honest with you. But there's a lot of countries, um, third world countries or whatever, they're going through it a little bit more. Now, now the, the so-called free countries are beginning to experience this now, yes. Okay, and those things you can't help. The Bible says that there are going to be people who are going to be martyrs for Christ. And this is what's happening, okay? But God, this is plainly stating that this is not for the saints, which means if you think what you're seeing on the news is bad now, uh-uh, oh, my, my, no. That they, the world hasn't seen God's wrath yet, okay? And guess what? We won't either. God does not want us to go through that. tells you right there, for God has not appointed us to wrath. God is not going to allow his wrath on this earth to happen to you. Okay, yes, yeah, so we're having bad weather, tsunamis, uh, hurricanes, and everything's burning up, and uh, everything's getting hotter, and whatever, all of a you have it. This world has, this earth has not seen what God has in store for them. And did you ever notice nowadays that the weatherman doesn't even know how to tell the weather? I was watching the news the other day, and a guy was trying to tell the weather, and the numbers were changing on him. He was, <laughs> he's standing there like, okay, well, it's supposed to be 78, to, I mean, 76, to, no, I mean, 78. He, the numbers were literally flicking on him. Okay, and they're trying to say that we're having sunspots or whatever now. But there's so much mess that's happening nowadays. You know, the, the weatherman, was, there used to be a time when they said, okay, t happy Monday, today's Monday, have a good day, blah, blah, blah. Tuesday's going to be 78 degrees. Uh, Wednesday's going to be 76 degrees. Thursday's going to be 79 degrees. And, and, and it would be 78, 76, and 79. Nowadays, they say Tuesday's going to be 78 degrees. You wake up Tuesday morning, it's 57 and they say Wednesday is going to be 90. I mean, and they say Wednesday is going to be, let's say, um, 75, a, a nice, cool, crisp 75, okay? Wednesday is going to be 75 years old, uh, 75 degrees. And the next thing you know, you wake up Wednesday, and it's 92. They haven't seen anything yet, okay? All the bad news that you're hearing right now is not for you, babe, whoever you are. I don't care who you are, male, female, black, white, wherever you're from, what country you live in, the stuff you're seeing on, on the bad news that you're hearing now, okay, on the news, this is not for you. Jesus is coming back. 
You can feel it. You can see it. He's going to get you before it gets worse. I mean, you're hearing things about what's happening on the Temple Mount. We're hearing things about the countries fighting each other. We're hearing things about countries getting together. They don't know whether they should fight each other or not. You know, it's getting to the point now where countries, the leaders of countries, don't know whether they should trust each other or not. Okay, it's coming. Armageddon is coming. But it's not for you. Have no fear. Yeshua HaMashiach is here. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Have no fear. Do you have Jesus? Are you saved? All you have to do is just repent of your sins and just say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. Would you be my Lord? I need you. Please, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord. I accept you as the Son of God. I accept you as my Savior of which I'm going to be caught up with along with the saints. And Jesus, I don't want to live bad. I don't want to live against you anymore. Forgive me of my sins. Save me and make me whole. Thank you. And if you just said that, Jesus just accepted you into the family of God, and you're going to be one of the ones, your loved ones, dead in Christ, is going to sit, you're going to, they're going to be up in the sky watching you come up with them. You just made it to the family of God. You will be caught up in the air. There is a rapture, okay? You will be one of the ones who's going to darken that sky for the sinners down here on this earth. God bless you. Amen. Now go get your, get a Bible and start studying the Word. It's never too late. Take your time. Don't try to keep up with anybody else. Take your time and let God work through you, okay? He'll show you everything that you need to know. And, and attend the Bible, believe in tongue talk in church. When I say that, I mean a church that believes in the Bible, preaches the Bible, unadulterated word of the Lord, of the Lord and, and speaks in tongues and operates on the Holy Spirit of God, not the spirit of the world. Amen. Don't go to a church just because it has a good rock band, okay, and they play guitar uh, nicely and, and everybody jumps around looking all crazy. Go to a church that they don't jump unless the Spirit tells them to. Okay. All right. Amen. And I congratulate you for being in the family of God. Heavenly Father. I ask that you bless each and every person that's been on this call, Father God, each and every household is represented by them so, so that we'll all get to meet each other in the air, Father God. I thank you uh, for, for all that you're doing for us. I thank you for being a wonderful father, the best father anyone could ever have, the one that's been there for people when our fathers, our human fathers failed us. You were there for us, Father God. And we love you. Baruch atah Adonai. Bless you, bless you, bless the Lord. That's what, that's what that means, Baruch atah Adonai. Hallelujah. For all of you that are listening, when you hear me say that, that means bless the Lord. Bless Adonai. Adonai is God, Holy Father. Amen. The creator of the whole earth. Blessed are you, creator of the entire universe. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Open up the hearts of those, Lord, that you want to hear your word. Hallelujah. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.